Hello, everyone, and welcome into the 32nd episode of Jack's Mailbag, the series where I answer your Gamecock Athletics questions. If you have a question you want answered on the next episode, be sure to drop a comment in the comments section below on this YouTube video, or if you have a question or topic you want answered on next week's episode, I'll also have a post on the Insiders Forum on GamecockCentral.com where you can drop any of your comments, any questions, anything you want to talk about. This week, we're going to be talking primarily about South Carolina football. So without further ado, let's get into our first question of the week from Steve Weebo, who asks, is Vandravius Jacobs hurt? Weird he played zero snaps this week, especially with how bad Gage Larvidane played. So, yeah, the question is in reference to Vandravius Jacobs, who did not play in the Texas A&M game over the weekend, which in case you miss it, South Carolina picked up a 44 to 20 win over the at the time number 10 Aggies and huge win for the Gamecocks. They're now five and three on the year. So here is what Shane Beamer said during his Sunday teleconference about Vandravius because he was asked about him and provided a lot more detail on what the case has been. Yeah, Dre was um, he was able to play, John. He wasn't, I would say, a hundred percent. Um, we uh, we we. He, he was good to go, but after going through pregame, he just didn't feel great. So Coach Furry said, all right, well, we're going to start the game, and then we're going to see how you feel as we get into it. And he just didn't feel like he was quite 100%. Uh, so we didn't put him in there last night. But we need him and, and um, need him to be 100% and uh, uh, back out on the field. And so that is what Shane Beamer had to say on his Sunday teleconference about Vandravius Jacobs and where he has been, because obviously he did not play in the Texas a and game. And yeah, I mean, you really do hope he comes back soon because he has been a nice piece for this offense, especially at receiver, where that's kind of a position that, again, we're now into going into week 11. And I still feel like no one has truly separated themselves in that room. Uh, Mizio Bennett has been a real standout, and hopefully we don't know what his status is looking like yet for this week's matchup against Vanderbilt. We'll find out soon enough here. But obviously he's been pretty good this year, and you know, he's a little banged up right now, and so is Jacobs. But before not playing in this game, I mean, he had 10 catches for 170 yards. So he hasn't done a ton this year, but when he gets the ball, he's able to make plays. I mean, he's averaging about 17 yards per catch. So – you really do hope Jacobs is all right and that he'll be able to suit up for the Gamecocks this weekend because if you don't have Mazio Bennett out there, I'm not saying that's the case, but let's just think a little forward here. If you don't have him, you probably need Jacobs, Jared Brown to step up, Nick Harbor, and you have some options, but you would definitely like to have both Jacobs and Bennett out there for sure. And our second and final question of the week comes from Washington Cock, who asks, Jack, with the Gamecocks upsetting Texas A&M and Clemson losing to Louisville, does this take some of the sting of your Yankees losing in the World Series? So, oh boy, this might lead to a can of worms opening up here. So let's uh, let's dive right into this question and break it down scientifically. So, number one, yes, the Gamecocks beating A&M makes my job a lot better, makes it a lot more fun covering the team. Like, obviously, Saturday night was really freaking cool like the fans storming the field just covering a win an upset win at that a real big win for this program that is awesome like i really enjoyed getting to cover that game because it was a lot of fun seeing south carolina play well and at the same time clemson lost to louisville and i don't really care either way honestly like is it better that clemson loses from a south carolina standpoint absolutely why not uh, you know, my brother and sister both go to Clemson, but honestly, I really don't. I'm kind of impartial to it. It's it's better for content when Clemson loses, obviously, especially when they play South Carolina. Um, but it, it's funny that I had a tweet about it that uh, was kind of interesting. That got a lot of traction on Twitter that Clemson fans were throwing bottles on the field when their team was losing and South Carolina fans at the same time basically simultaneously, we're getting ready to storm the field after an upset win. So it's just it's just funny how Saturday worked out. Now, the question is, does it soften the blow of the Yankees losing the World Series? Absolutely not. And, you know, I haven't really gotten a chance to honestly talk about it publicly at least. So I guess you know, this is my show, my episode, my thing. So I'll have the floor to kind of vent about my Yankees for a second. So if you want to keep listening, go ahead. If not, uh, I, don't, I don't know. So anyway. Uh, look, 
the World Series, oh man, what a what a disaster, right? The Yankees were just outplayed this series, and Game One uh, was you had the game. It was three two, I think, going into the bottom of the tenth, and you're what, two outs away, and Aaron Boone, you know, Baboon decides to bring in Nestor Cortez, a guy who hadn't pitched in a game because he, you know, made the World Series roster, but he had been hurt and hadn't pitched in like 37 days. Boone decides to bring him in to face, I believe it was Shohei Otani and then Freddie Freeman to get the final two outs instead of throwing Tim Hill, another left-handed pitcher who has been used in high leverage situations throughout the playoffs. So I'm mind boggled by that decision. And obviously it didn't work out because as the story goes by now, uh, Otani swung at the first pitch and popped out into foul ground. And credit to Alex Verdugo for making a great catch leaping into the, the stands down the third base line. But then Cortez leaves a fast uh, pitch o- over the heart of the zone, up and in, and Freeman hits a walk-off grand slam, which was ridiculous. And the Yankees should have won that game. Like, you you make better pitches there. You probably end up winning. Like, Freeman was hobbled by injuries and stuff, and that was absurd. And then, obviously, game five, the other case, which I'm trying to forget about, to be honest. But, hey, look, the Yankees kill themselves with mistakes. And that has been the, the, the M.O., of this team this entire season. If you watched any Yankee game, as much as I have, you'll know well and sure that this team mistakes have bitten them in the butt all season long. And to make three costly mistakes in the fifth inning of a game that you're leading five, nothing in with Aaron judge, supposed MVP He's going to be, he's going to be an MVP for the second time in his career, but he's a regular season player. Let's call it for what it is. Drops a fly out uh, on a line drive to center field. That would have been an out, but instead it leads to the Dodgers getting a rally going. You know, Anthony Rizzo gets a ground ball to first base that he probably should have taken to the bag. And look, Mookie Betts is hustling down the line, so he's a tough guy to get out. But at the same time, it's like Garrett Cole should have been covering first base. And I'm at these fall baseball scrimmages for South Carolina, and I I see pitchers having no problem covering the bag. So I got no idea what was going on there, but at the same time, I'm kind of more of the opinion that Rizzo should have hustled over to first base and gotten the final out of the inning. Because if he did, it's a 5 nothing game, and we're not talking about any of this. And then, of course, Anthony Volpe. Uh, and I don't really blame him for this necessarily. He feels a ground ball short, and I think it probably would have been third out of the inning if I'm remembering correctly. But his throw over to third base was not a good one, and it went in the dirt. And the Dodgers got five runs, and then obviously they won the game. Uh, so they won the World Series. So, look. Does it soften the blow? No, no, no way. Because, look, this is my first real chance to rem- remember at least watching the Yankees in a World Series. Like 2000, I just I was just born. Like I was probably like three or four months old. So obviously I don't remember that. Uh, 2009, I, I remember bits and pieces, but I don't remember like the full picture. Like I won't remember it like I do with this because you know this is my first time. I'm 24 years old and. Getting to watch the Yankees in a World Series for the first time in 15 years, like, like I'm gonna always remember the ALCS when the Yankees clinched, and I have video of it. And you know, now to see my team lose in the World Series, no, it, it doesn't make me feel any better. Because look, I'm not, I'm not a South Carolina fan. I just cover the team, and obviously, seeing South Carolina win and Clemson lose, like that's great and all. It's nice for work, but, but on a personal standpoint, with my fandom with the Yankees, not, nothing can ever make me feel better about seeing my all-time favorite team lose in the World Series. It's like for like put let's put it into Gamecock perspective. Let's say South Carolina, I don't know, goes to Omaha, right? And they let's say like they lose on a walk-off in game three of the college world series in the championship round, right? And I hope I'm not speaking into existence or previewing anything, foreshadowing. But let's say that's the case. And then let's say South Carolina goes out and beats uh, next year. They they beat LSU on the road in Baton Rouge. Does, would that soften the blow for anyone watching this? Uh, that their you know, South Carolina football got a win over LSU. When uh, Does that soften the blow for baseball losing in Omaha? No, absolutely not. And if it does, that's crazy to me. So that's kind of my take on it. I hope that analogy kind of made sense. It's kind of what I'm going through. Uh, you know, my World Series Yankee cap came in the mail on Halloween, and I had ordered it like two weeks ago when the Yankees won the ALCS. So that was a 
that was a whole another thing. But yeah, so look, at the end of the day, I know this is a long answer in a, in a what should have been a quick video, but you know the, the question was asked, and the, I feel a lot better now talking about it. So look, I'm pissed the Yankees lost the World Series the way they did. I, I they got a lot of moves to make. Obviously, at the time of recording this, Garrett Cole is back with the Yankees now after the Yankees added an extra year to his contract, and then they still got signed Juan Soto. So a lot of decisions to make for the Yankees, and that's enough of that. Getting back to Gamecocks, so uh, South Carolina is back on the road this week playing in Nashville against Vanderbilt. That game is on Saturday at 4.15 p.m. on SEC Network. I will be in Nashville for that game covering it, and we'll have a lot to talk about from that. We'll be going live on – Gamecock Central's YouTube this week, uh, Wednesday, and then Sunday on Sunday Reset with me. So it should be a lot of fun. So if you have a question you want answered on the next episode of Jack's Mailbag, which would be episode 33, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below on this YouTube video or I'll have a post on the Insiders Forum on GamecockCentral.com where you can ask any of your questions, topics, anything you all want to talk about. Let's do it. Let's get some more questions on the next episode. So That'll do it for now, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Bye.